It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. Back for another week of uh, Brilliant Idiotness. Okay, uh, happy to be here. October has started off with a goddamn bang. Uh, we might as well get to it. Uh, what did you see this past week? Shows that you thought was positively brilliant. What did you see that made you say, what a fucking idiot? Oh, man. This was, uh, dude, the VP debate was uh, brilliant. You know what's sad? It's sad that the VP debate uh, comes off as more presidential than way more. the actual presidential debate. Way Mike more. Pence yeah. and Senator Harris <laughs> are way more presidential Be honest. than the people they're number twos with. Did you watch it and were you like, if either of them were president, be all right? Um... Yeah, I felt like that. I mean, I mean, the thing about Mike Pence is that, you know, he's an attorney. Um, you know, he's got experience as a politician. So yeah. he's just able to articulate alternative facts. Oh, he's a cold-hearted motherfucker. Yeah. That dude is a beast. Yeah, he can articulate, you know. But, all, yeah. but oh, by the way, all politicians do it. It's not like it's just a yeah. Mike Pence thing. They're both able to articulate things better than Biden? Trump and Biden. From... Actually, I think Trump communicates pretty well. He doesn't say it in an articulate way, but he just gets the point. Like, it's, there's this funny his messaging video. Is, yeah, his messaging is directed to Son, the point. I got to show you this video. We got to bring it up. But this is worth, it's actually worth taking a second for. Have, have you seen the video? It's comparing, like, uh, when Obama was talking about things to when uh, Trump was talking about oh, things. No. Oh, this shit. Watch this right here. This right here. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, I did see that. Abu Bakar al Baghdadi. I did see He's that. Dead. He's dead. The United States launched a targeted operation <laughs> against that compound. They did a lot of shooting and they did a lot of blasting. Even not going through the that. front door. You know, you think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. He died like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I prefer that level of messaging if you know what the fuck you're talking about. Yes. Because I'm from the South. From the yes. South, that's how we communicate. My daddy used to always say, the fastest way between two points is a straight line. Yes. People wonder why Killer Mike is such an effective communicator. Uh -huh. It's not just because he's brilliant. It's not just because he's educated. It's because he's from the South. Okay. Duval, a brilliant communicator. Because he's from the South. It's just something about Southern people. We get right to the point with it. I'm not yeah. saying Trump's not from the South, of course, but his 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 messaging is very uh, Southern-like in its delivery. Uh. Yes, I think so. And and uh, also positively brilliant, uh, me. And the reason I'm positively brilliant is because I told y'all last week, even though we didn't get to talk about it on Idiots, I said, I don't think Donald Trump has COVID. I said it was an October surprise. I said, I think Donald Trump, I said, two things can happen. I said, the only way Donald Trump can make me believe he has COVID is if he passes away. God forbid, because I don't mm -hmm. wish death on nobody. That's number one. Right. Number two, if he doesn't have it and he survives it, what do you think a 74-year-old man that weighs 244 pounds, is labeled clinically obese, already thought that the coronavirus was 99% harmless? His yeah. words. Yeah. Do you, how the fuck you think he was going to act if he survives COVID? Fuck you. Come on, be unbearable as hell. But also, uh -huh. I said this. I said Trump's going to take some type of therapeutic vaccine. It's going to be some type of experimental cocktail. Uh huh. He's going to come out, tell the American people about it. Everybody's going to line up to get it. Stocks are going to shoot through the roof. He probably has some type of equity in it. What the fuck came out yesterday? What? The shit, uh, what's the pharmacy company called? Renegade or some Renegade, shit. Renegade, something with Not a R. Not Renegade, but I started yeah, to yeah, say yeah. Neutrogena, but it ain't Neutrogena. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's something with an R, yeah, right? Yeah. That company is out of Queens, New York. Okay. Um, Trump has had stock and equity in the company before. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Jared Kushner has stock in it now or something like that. Okay. Like, so that was reported yesterday. So my whole point is, Trump probably knows he's losing in November. Let me cash out. Let me cash out. Interesting. Let me cash the fuck out. So you're saying that he's invested in the company uh, that owns the drug that he took that allegedly saved him. He's been invested in it before. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's Jared. It's called Regeneron. Regeneron. Regeneron, yes. Look up the article about, because uh, they reported it yesterday, but it's something 
about Jared Kushner and Regeneron and whatever, whatever. The moral of the story is, I don't think he fucking had COVID. Really? No, man. And if you, why would the most narcissistic, arrogant person who's downplayed something so much uh -huh. come out and say he has it? So he can beat it. So he can normalize people going out and carrying on with their lives. That's true. That, that, that's what that's I part thought the whole it. hustle was. It's like, that's yo, it. if I got, I think. That's why okay. he got them stimulus checks. He's like, y'all don't need no fucking money. This, <laughs> shit. this shit is like a cold. <laughs> he, like, he, said, he said, I had this shit for two days and beat it. And y'all motherfuckers ain't going to work. He said, hell no, ain't no more money. That's what he did. I'm telling you. <laughs> he literally tweeted out, it's flu season. It's flu season. 100,000 people died about. from the flu. <laughs> we still go on with our lives, don't we? Back out to work. I'm telling you, that's... It, it's Interesting. It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of brilliant, bro. That's that's where you got to give it a little credit because you can't really tell people to go out there and work when they could get corona and you're not going to get it. But if you get corona and you beat it and you are the type of person that dies from corona, you can tell people to do whatever the fuck you want. Not only that, Andrew. He sucked every single negative headline about him out of the media. That was the best part of it. Bro, yeah. Melania Trump tapes leak where she's saying she don't care about kids at the border. No, no, she didn't say that. She didn't? Nah. What did she say? She did not say that. She said, because what she said was fire. What did she say? She called Stormy Daniels a porn hooker. Oh, well, guess what? Trump's coronavirus announcement sucked but, the media but wait, but wait, away but, like that porn hooker would have. But, <laughs> right? Sucked all the negative media away like goddamn Stormy Daniels would have. It did, but what she said, she called Stormy Daniels a porn hooker and then she said, why are they upset at me? She said some shit like, why are they upset? I don't give a fuck about them kids. No, she said, what are they, <laughs> they said, she goes, what do they want me to do with the kids at the border? I can't do anything. Like, I arranged the curtains. I have no power. She basically is saying, like, I do nothing as the first lady. I don't have any power. And then she goes, and why weren't they upset when Barack Obama was putting them in cages? This happened under Obama. It was actually a moment where she seemed politically savvy. First of all, I think you're brilliant because I couldn't even listen to that shit. <laughs> oh, son, it was fire. I, I, I read the cliff note. I'm like, I can't listen to her. Fire, dude. You got to okay. listen to it. I mean, she has not even tried to learn So why English. was that a thing? Why were they acting like that was going to be a thing? That's not a thing. What's fucked well, up is that was her homie that was taping her this whole time. Well, the taxes, Can't trust no all one. the tax shit gone out of the media. Tax shit is gone. The Trump debate from last week, uh, stand by, stand back, The white supremacist shit is the only thing they had to bury, and they buried it. They buried nah, it. Nah, they had to bury the time. tax shit. No, nah, because the tax shit, he said he didn't pay taxes in 2016. He's like, yeah, of course not. I used the loopholes. Yeah, but it's the debt. Everybody keeps talking about the, it, like the seven hundred and fifty dollars in taxes. I'm not tripping off that. I would love yeah. to pay seven hundred fifty dollars in taxes. Yeah. But it's the debt. It's the fact he's four hundred million dollars in debt. Yeah, to institutions in America. No. Yes. They, no, that's not proven. They because even when she bought it up last night, Pence couldn't say shit. When she bought it up last night, Pence was stuck. Oh he, hi, oh hi, Taylor. Welcome. Taylor Thanks gang. for joining us. When she bought it up last night, to Pence, she said that she was like, "We don't know who he's in debt to." Pence couldn't say shit. He couldn't but even... they do. They listed it already. It came nah. out. They do. I can name the ones right here. I that was the I... first thing I started looking into because I was like, yo, that's fucked up. If a dude owes half a billy to foreign entities, if you notice, how can he be objective? If you notice, they keep... Even Trump. Trump hasn't even talked about his debt. Hmm. All Trump says is that's a lie. All go Trump like this, Taylor. Go like this. Go around here. All Trump talks about is the, the low number he paid in taxes, but even he says that's a lie. He says I paid millions of dollars in taxes. Hmm. Trump does not talk about the debt. Neither does Pence. Pence would Pence ignored that last night. Yeah, okay. They, they both enough. ignored shit last Yo, night. Yo, yeah. What do you feel about the uh, the packing the seats in the in the Supreme Court? Are I they think are a, afraid I, of that. Question. I think that's an easy thing to explain if they explain it. You know what I'm saying? If they explain it and they say, "Look, if Donald Trump puts another Supreme Court justice in here, I think it'll be like six to two or seven to three or some shit like that." He was like, "They was like that's just an uneven balance." So I think that if they explain that to the American people, yes, we would put more, we would pack the court so it would be fair. I don't think that's a hard thing but, to explain. But what's fair? That's the thing that's interesting. Whatever, listen, here's the about. thing. Whatever you can do is fair. Like even when, even if Donald Trump can push Amy Coney Barrett through because he's the president, yeah. that's fair. If the Senate votes on it, that's fair. Yeah, that's the system. So, so if they changing can get the in system and, might not be fair. No, right? that's part of it. I didn't know you could do that, but you can do that. You can add Supreme Court seats. It's not even a hard thing to do. I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah. I, that's the first I've even... Has it been done? Is there any precedent nah, for No, I don't think. I think it's always been nine. I could be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. I, th I think it's either always always been nine on the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because... Um, but she... That was a fire rebuttal with her, though. Nah, what she said? She tried to avoid it at first. And then she said, you want to talk about packing the courts? 
She said, y'all put all of these federal judges' lifetime appointments in. Like, there's just like 50 of them. None of them are black. Like, Pence was like, all right. <laughs> he didn't say nothing. <laughs> he, just, he just ducked the question. Yeah. I thought, they, I, you know, I thought they did great. I thought both of them were great. Both of them were excellent. Both of them were excellent. I had lower expectations for Pence. Really? Yeah, I guess I didn't realize that he was that kind of smooth, smooth talker, if you will. But he was composed. Like he was, he was ready to go. Most tops are. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk your way to some booty. Most tops are ready to go. <laughs> what did you make it a whole bug situation? Um, I mean, great memeable moment. I mean, for me, what, what I thought about, honestly, I was like, yo, if we, if people really believe in this reptilian shit, yeah. now is the moment where we about to see a forked tongue, tongue come out this motherfucker's yeah. mouth and he gonna eat this fly. Because you can't help it, right? You sitting there yeah. and you've been sitting there for like an hour and some change and you're starting to get hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking fly lands on your head. You just want lick that shit real quick. <laughs> yo, yeah. imagine if that shit would have happened. That'd be hilarious. Um, other than that, I was just like, all right, it's a fucking fly. I mean, it, th- I will say the moment that it happened, if mm-hmm. you, you got to listen to what he was saying, what, what was he was saying? talking about. He said that Senator Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are always putting out these presumptions that America is systemically racist and yeah. that there's no, he said, he said, he said, they try to say that there's racial bias in law enforcement. Yeah. So the moment he was talking some real bullshit, yeah. <laughs> that fly swooped right in and landed right on his fucking head. And he spent two minutes talking about some shit that we all know exists. Yo, I don't give a fuck. If you can't acknowledge that systemic racism exists in America, bro. Yeah. If you can't acknowledge that systemic racism exists in law enforcement. Yeah. It existed or currently exists. He said it don't exist. He said, he said that Senator Harris and Biden are always talking about this presumption. Of systemic racism as if it's just an idea. I think it's undeniable that it definitely existed, but in terms of like laws that are in place right now to be racist, like currently, I don't know if I can well, point in any current. Well, it's not about the law. It's about this actual system, the way America was structured. Systemic racism is the fact that fucking Ebony K. Williams is the first black uh, housewife on Real Housewives of New York. Why? As long as that show has been on, only one, like we we should be embarrassed that in America we, we have first when it comes to Black people are first when it comes to Latinos. It's because these structures and these institutions are built on whiteness. Right. So right. If, if I'm a white person in a position of power, yeah, I can keep people from not being here. I can keep people from not getting right, seats to the that, table. But that wouldn't be the system that's racist. That would be the people within the system that are, that are racist. That's, that's racist actors. I think systemic racism is redlining. I think systemic racism is Jim Crow. I, think I agree with system, that. Like, I think that's truly the system. Uh, stop and frisk, you could definitely make the argument was systemically racist. But in terms of... Hiring practices can be systemically racist. Uh, the, whether, yeah, they whether or not they're on the books or not. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I still think it's forms of segregation in America. I think that, you know, if you look, if you're a, a, a landlord and you hear somebody's voice, hi, I'm Shaniqua, and you're like, oh, oh no, we don't do we that. good. And yeah. you go back, hi, I'm, I'm Karen. Yeah. Hey, oh, welcome. Yeah, yeah. That's systemic racism. Whether it's on the books or not, it's a system that is rooted in bigotry, rooted in racism, rooted see, in whiteness. See, that... See, that's where I give a little pushback because I think it's like, okay, these are racist people that get put in these positions of power probably because of a history of systemic yeah. racism. But when we apply systemic racism to now, I think it's tricky because you you basically open up you open up a little space for people on the conservative side who agree with Mike Pence to go, well, no, this is to point at this. Sh- show me where the systemically racist law exists. And well, that's you- not what you're saying. What you're saying is like the legacy of systemic racism has put people in positions of power who reinforce those things, even if they're not there. Yeah. And so then when you op- uh, lift up the hood under America and you start looking at all the Fortune 500 companies, like where the black people? Yeah. <laughs> you know that's my saying? that's the thing that <laughs> cracks me up about like Hollywood. It cracks me up about. Uh, Look at Hollywood. Well, no, it's not even like it's not even Hollywood, right? It's like it's all these like uh, it's corporations. You know, they they're all woke. They at least front like they're woke. But the reality is, if you look at their executive boards, they're all white, right? And, and that's why, that's why but, right now the conversation about systemic racism has to happen because the people who are in positions of power who have have the privilege have to acknowledge it. Yeah, can't be like Mike Pence and be like, oh, that doesn't exist. Because once you acknowledge it, you can atone for it. Maybe there's a, yeah, yeah, you acknowledge in the past 
you acknowledge in the past and you can acknowledge like racist practice that, that continue. But I think, I think people get caught up in like the legalese of it. But, um, but yeah, that shit would piss me off. Like, first of all, there's nothing wrong with like an executive board that's all white. Just like there's nothing wrong with an executive board that's all black. Like, that's fine. You can have that. It depends, what, it depends what the company is. Exactly. I think it depends the actions of the company, mm -hmm. right? If you're an executive board that's all white, but you're a white water rafting company, okay. Amazing. That's that's what y'all do. You know I'm, not I mean? going ever, if, ever, I'm not going to ever be like, why the fuck it got to be white water? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do your thing. I don't care. Exactly, right? If it's NASCAR, if it's one of these things, of course, right? But if you're one of these companies that like really harps on how important diversity is to you, like these Hollywood studios do, right? You know, we had a black president of the United States of America before there was a black president of any of these uh, Hollywood uh, film studios. I can't think of any. Who's the black? Who's the black? Well, Tyler Perry had to make his own, but there yeah. isn't one. There hasn't been one. So yeah. when you really, when you really break it down, to me, I just see it as so fraudulent. I see these people like crying about uh, how important diversity is and like putting all these rules and regulations in. Okay, you can't win an Oscar unless you have all this diversity. It was like, where's your diversity? That's, bro? What, that's all I'm saying. Where, why is it everybody wants to do diversity with someone else's job, not their own? You ever notice that? Shake up the C suites, baby. Like low key, I kind of respect. Um, What's Man, her name? Fucking fly from you got that fucking fly in here, bro. We got Damn. What, Was it Serena Williams? Serena Williams' husband? I think he was on, he was like this, he was the owner of Reddit or whatever like that. And he said he was stepping down to, uh, and his position had to be filled by a black person, mm -hmm. right? Now, I think that's stupid to just go, this person has to be black. It should just be filmed by the best person. But at the same time, it's like, Oh wow, he's really putting his money where his mouth is. He really cares about diversity. Yeah, he yeah, really yeah, thinks yeah. that's the change that's gonna happen. He's willing to sacrifice his own shit. Okay, yeah, you're back. about it. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second because you need new underwear. You need to get your life together and get some new underwear. You know you got holes in your underwear. Your underwear look ridiculous. Well, waffled at the bottom. It looks pathetic. Girls don't like it. It's sad. You think the girls don't look at your underwear? Yes, they do. They judge you on it. Okay, and some of you, you need a little separation between your package and your piece. Okay, you need a little. A little space for your gag and a little space for your balls. Your balls need your own little separation. And you know what? Sheath offers that. That's right. It's a new underwear company that separates the dick from the balls. I know they're sweaty and all stuck together. You don't need to do that anymore. They're separated. Sheath perfectly harnesses them. And you know what you can do? You can go to sheathunderwear.com and use the promo code BRILLIANT and you can try them motherfuckers out for 20% off your order when you use the promo code BRILLIANT. I'm telling you this. It's not a game. Comfy, amazing underwear. Separate that dick from the balls. Let it breathe for a second the way that God intended. God didn't want your dick and balls mashed together in some underwear. It wanted a little separation, a little tiny bit of flop, but not too much. Sheathunderwear.com. Promo code is Brilliant, you're getting 20 for 20 percent off your order. Now let's get back to the show. The, the speaker to that, that was that that was something I thought about last night too. Like you could watch Senator Harris and see how hesitant she was being. Oh, you felt? Yeah. And cause I mean, I like I've seen her. I've watched her in Senate hearings over the years, and I've seen her right in, in action. Like she was a she was about at a three last night. And what bothers me about that is just like, man, she was holding back because she doesn't want to have the perception. Of being the angry black woman. You think? I know so. And it's like, yo, why can't she show up as her full self? Well, it, is that what you're saying? She is the angry black woman? It don't matter. Like, yeah. you, you should be allowed to feel your feelings, right? Like, that's what your therapist says. Your therapist says, yes. feel your feelings. So if you are debating somebody and you get angry about something, who gives a fuck? Yeah. If you get passionate about something, who gives a fuck? If you get mad about something, who gives I think a that's fuck? Fair. I Trump think don't that's give fair. a shit. Yeah. Biden definitely don't give a shit. We saw yeah. that in their debate. They was going at going it. Going at it, yeah. Shit, even Pence last night. Yo, Pence was full on white male privilege. Like, I'm not listening to you, white woman. And, yeah. I'm, not, and I'm not listening to this black Talking woman Talking over right there. over her, man. Oh, please. That shit was so comforting to see, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit made me feel right at home. I was like, ugh. Oh. The funny part is they, they do, um they give those moderators too much black for no reason. What the, you're saying the- Both uh, of them, Chris Wallace and the young lady last night. I forget, I, well, not young. Carol Baskin. Yeah. That was? Stop, no. <laughs> what's, her, what's her name? No. That's Why's the girl from Tiger King. That's you never Tiger saw Tiger King? King? Oh, Susan. <laughs> no, I know Susan. Yeah. Susan. 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 Yeah. Susan Baskin. I thought it was Kelly or something. Susan, Susan. You're not sure? all named yes. Kelly, Charlamagne. Did you hear the rumor <laughs> that the bug on uh, Pence's head was actually Kamala's mom? 
Hold on, damn. It is something to that. They said it. Hold they believe in, if you believe in reincarnation, you can see it happens. No, somebody sent me that this morning. Who's uh, okay, yes, uh what do flies represent? Flies have been around since before humans. In the big biblical plague of Egypt, flies represent death and decay. The Philistine god Beelzebub's name, often equated with Satan, means Lord of the Flies. That's what I'm saying, bro. No, that's not her mom. What? Well, it doesn't have to be your mom. It could be grandma. It could be grandpa or something I like that. I just think it but was... I, I honestly... Any of them could be reincarnated and they could come back to help and then just nestle into nah. Mike Pence's perfect marshmallowy hair. I think <laughs> I think, I think, think that that fly literally was there just so everybody can get their shit jokes off. If they yeah. ever... Like, if they, if, if for everybody out there who thinks that they're full of shit or pieces of shit or whatever you want to call them, that's what that was for. Yo, but Charlamagne, and that was horrible, bro. Charlamagne, how you see that? reflects how you see Pence because the initial reaction for a lot of people watching it were like, oh, that's right. Well, shit attracts flies. Mm -hmm. But how else can you catch flies, Charlemagne? What, honey? Damn right. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting pers perspective. I just felt mm. bad. I'm, I'm just wondering why that shit was on his head for two minutes and he didn't feel it. I'm wondering why his hair is. Th is that his hair? Can't be. There's no way. No way. Male That's lace front? That fly, White that people have no lace way. fronts, bro. You didn't know that? No way. That fly was on that shit for two minutes. He didn't move. And nobody told him. That would have been the ill shit. The center of the house would have been like, yo, you got a booger. I'm like, oh, that's a fly. <laughs> <laughs> just to yo, fuck with him. Who was it? Uh, was it Mark? Mark said the thing about that's how you know he wasn't wearing an earpiece? Oh, yeah. Like, remember how they said, like, oh, Biden has yeah, earpiece yeah, in or, like, yeah, yeah, Trump yeah. had an earpiece in. They're just telling him what to they, say. But here's the thing, though. The people that have the earpieces, they, they, they wouldn't notice that shit. You know why? Why? Because they're busy... Listening to what Senator Harris is saying. Yeah. So they can tell him how to rebuttal. Yeah. It's the people at home who ain't really paying attention to the words that are coming out their motherfucker's mouth. Bro. And they see the fly on there. No, but what if what if in his earpiece he's they they're just saying, remove that insect? And he's like, huh? It's Why would you talk about her like that? <laughs> <laughs> who are these racists in my ear? What's going on? Trump, and Trump called her a monster this morning. Really? Yeah, on For Fox what? News. Because he was just like that monster on the stage last night. That's why it's okay to just show up as you are. Because they're going to trash you anyway. So it's no need to hold back. It's no need to hold mm. back and go in there and try to, you know, be cool and come off as, high. I'm nice in the house. I'm poised. Yeah. If you feel like getting your shit off, get, get your shit off. Yeah. For, and by, by the way, we also got to remember, too, it's 2020, baby. Uh -huh. What is this about? What, what kind of era do we live in? Corona. Perform <laughs> performative, man. Oh, performative. You got to yeah, be yeah. able to perform. Go out yeah. there and perform. You're looking at the camera. I, by the way, I hate that. When they look I, straight in oh, the camera. I hate that shit. That I was POV saying, stop, feels man. like stop, porn, man. right? Stop, stop, stop. Why do they do that? Mm -hmm. It seems, it feels so fake. Yeah. And yeah. so inauthentic. Like, if you got something to say, just say it. Don't turn and say, America. Yeah. You're like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is uncomfortable. I hate right? it. Biden did it. Come <laughs> it. And you could tell they're practicing it. Yeah. But Kamala didn't do it that much. Yeah, she did it enough. You think? Yeah. I, really? It wasn't as bad as Biden. It wasn't though. as bad as Biden, but she did it. I thought. I just think that shit is whack. I don't. But like Biden's it. fun because you don't know if he's gonna even know the next word that comes out. <laughs> so like you're watching and there's some anticipation and excitement. He's like medica. Is he gonna say it? Is he gonna say it? Medicare? Okay, he got it. This is good. It's amazing. It's like watching some no, like it it's, it's like watching a, fl a frog on lily pads. Like he's just jumping. I really. Maybe he's gonna sink. <laughs> I really want to know what happens after this show. What do you mean? Like, like we 27 more days. Like yeah. what happens? Like literally. I think we'll have an election. We're definitely having an election. Uh, and then we'll probably choose a president. And, <laughs> and, then, and, and did what though? <laughs> nah, I don't know, man. I think the people have already made their minds. I think that a lot of this is just confirmation. Like you just watch this to make sure you're right. I so don't know, you, man. I think, I, well, at least for Democrats, what I would say to Democrats is, um, don't don't think of it like that. Don't think people have made up their mind because in 2000, and I keep repeating this number because it's so true. In 2012, 4.4 yeah. million people who voted for Obama stayed home in 2016. Yeah. A third of them were black. How do you get them to come to the party? You know what I'm saying? How yeah. do you get them to get up off their asses in 2020 and say, I'm coming out to vote? How do you get black people to come to the party, Charlemagne? Tell me. I'm not. I'm not doing this with you. <laughs> I'm just saying. How do you? How would you do it? You're a marketing maven. How would you do it? How do you if get I black was, people? If it was me and I was working for the Democratic Party, I would mm -hmm. say, get a DJ. Get it? No, no, I'm saying. Yeah. I, I would say. I would say. Listen. I would say. Listen. Big booty hoes. Vote yeah. with it. <laughs> you have to speak to people's interests. 
people like this. This is where the Democratic Party is at with black people right now. You've been with a guy for years. Yeah. Guys always promised you the world, talk sweet, does things to you, never really delivered. Yeah, but you stick around. Yeah, stick around. You know, he's not a bad guy. He's just he don't he's do just shit for you. He's yeah. just a guy, right? Yeah. And then eventually, when you realize, you know what, this this shit ain't really serious. Like we not really, you're not about to get married. Like you know, he's not really trying to wipe me out. You want to have kids. When you about to walk away, he's like, I'll do it, baby. Whatever you want, please. Let me marry you. Let me, let me get you pregnant. All of that type of shit. And you like, I don't have no reason to believe you at this point. You done gave me years and years and years of false promises. So now, when your heart is broken, when you're down, and you know that I'm the best thing that ever happened to you, but I'm ready to leave. Now you begging me to stay because you need me. Hey. You need me. That's where they at with black people right now. And I can't speak for all black people. I'm just saying for some of the ones I talk to, a lot of people I talk to, they like, I don't give a shit. So how do how do they get you back? By speaking to black people's interests. Like but they've they keep, been doing like, that forever no, and they've they just haven't. been lying. No, they haven't. They talk about prison reform, which is great. We want that. They talk about criminal justice reform, which is great. We want that. Mm -hmm. They talk about free education, which is great. But guess what? All black people ain't in jail. All black yeah. people are not committing crimes. You know how you talk to black people? You talk to black people by talking about economic equity, which Joe Biden has started to talk about only because we've been putting so much pressure on him. But well, what does that look like? Do they have a plan? Do they That's have a platinum plan? What does that look like? What's better than platinum? I don't fucking this know. This is the VVS plan? In the screaming era, who knows? But yeah. I don't, like, they, they have to start speaking to people's interests when it comes to economics because right. America has fucked up so much, right? right? America has fucked up when it comes to slavery, segregation, all of this type of shit. How are you going to atone for that? You can only atone for that through money. If you're hearing all of these black people talk about reparations and you're looking at the way coronavirus impacted the black community and you know it's all these underlying conditions that was already existed in the black community that made them the most vulnerable, how do you step up? Mm -hmm. Money. So you're saying buy your vote. Who gives a shit? Just buy the vote. It's transactional. Now trans dump 500 billion in the hood. Trump can put the platinum plan on the table, mm -hmm. but I don't care about any policy commitments from Donald Trump. You know why? Because you don't think he'll do it. No, because he's the president. You can do it. So if you've done you can it, get already, it done, you would have already done it. Yeah. Interesting. What if he was like, Nah, let's, let's start this now before I'm out. He can do it right now. You got 27 days. Now is the time to be throwing her Hail Marys, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now is the time for all October surprises. Surprise! I'm giving all black people $500 billion. I'm investing $500 billion into the black community. Great. Let's go. Why not? Mm. You've seen you get fucking, what, $1.3 trillion? Yeah. To all of these corporations? Yo, why not invest $500 billion in the black banks? My man Killer Mike just opened up uh, an online black bank uh, today. The Greenwood Bank. Really? You know what I mean? Uh, you got uh, uh, One United. You got uh, Carver's. Invest that $500 billion in the black banks. Robert Smith has a plan, a 2% plan, where he wants these corporations to invest 2% of their net income into black banks. Black banks. Do it. I got a Trump. black bank account. Do it. And by the way, you don't even have to, you don't have to do nothing. Steve Man uh, Mnuchin, whatever the fuck his name Mnuchin. is. Mnuchin. He can write a check. He can do that shit tomorrow. He can push that through tomorrow. Yeah. Five hundred billion dollars back. They don't got to do no vote on it, no nothing. Do you think that Americans like our idea and concept of money has changed since the stimulus? Since the stimulus? Yeah, like since the government just printed money out of nowhere and sent it to us. Do you think we're a little bit? No, I think we always felt that way. Really? Yes. I never felt that way. America I always it was like no. America it, always felt that way. Really? We've been saying it for years. They print money. They print your bacon. You can print money. Huh. I ain't been saying that for years. I don't think so. Really? I don't think okay. I don't think nobody thought it was a cap. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't I don't think anybody thought that. Like Nina Senator Turner was on this morning. She said some real shit. She was like, yo, they always telling you what to do. They're always telling you what they're going to do with your tax dollars. Yeah. That's your money. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, man, we I think we talked about this before. If you look at the amount of money that is paid in taxes in a year, it's so much shit that we could we could take care of each other with. Mm. If that money was going in the right place. But that the problem is that money ain't going in the hood. Mm. That money's going into them fly ass neighborhoods in Jersey, them fly ass neighborhoods in LA. All you gotta do is drive through one of them rich neighborhoods. You'll see where all the tax dollars going, baby. Right. Because they're probably paying the most taxes. Yeah. And you see, but you and you see what them, you see what the schools, their schools are great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just look at the state taxes in Jersey. Yeah. Look at the amount of money paid in state taxes in Jersey. So you're saying taxes are good if they're paid. Taxes are good utilize. if they're going to the right people. 
That's what right. they're supposed to be doing. They tell us that we're paying taxes to take care of the less fortunate, right? So the poor so, and disenfranchised. Just out of curiosity, do you support this idea? Maybe those schools in Jersey and the nice uh, neighborhoods will just be a little bit more, you know, uh, I don't want to say moderate, uh, modest, a little bit more modest. And then the schools in the poor neighborhoods, which are struggling, would be a little bit more, I don't know, uh, wealthy, if you I will. Think, I think all schools, honestly, have, can have the same amount of everything. I guess, I guess it, in order for that. middle, high school, like. But in order for that to happen, a little bit got to come from the nice, right? Like that's the whole idea of like taxation, right? Like we, you and I get taxed way more than some poor people and that helps those poor people. But we would do the same thing. It's supposed to help those poor people. Right, right. The idea is it helps poor people. But we would do that with schools. But the tricky thing with that is we'd have to tell those kids that go to like the rich fancy school, we'd have to be like, hey, you can't have all the rich fancy stuff you have because in order for those poor schools to have more stuff, which they fucking deserve, we need to take some of the money out of you and give it to them. And you probably get crazy pushback from those parents, right? I don't think it would be that much different, yo. I really think you can make the school. I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I'm just saying that's the tricky conversation you got to have is when you start telling. I, I think you can. I think you can have equal opportunity, nice education across the board in the hood or the suburbs. But do, don't you think like it would have to come from somewhere? Like it'd have to give a little bit. Uh, the, the most money I would put, I would put money in making all the schools the same, but I would give more money to those teachers who live in those points. Well, I think teachers should be getting paid more all across the board, but I would yeah. give more to those teachers who choose to work in those poor and disenfranchised areas. Because poor kids are more annoying. <laughs> what? Why? 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 What's up with this guy? <laughs> why? Wait, why do they get paid more to teach the same algebra? It's because the same it's, algebra. It's, no, because it's poor. <laughs> it's just, it's the same two plus two, but when the poor kids. Two plus two equals poor. All right? <laughs> but it's because, because, because it's a poor and it's a franchise area. Let's be honest, crime is probably higher. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's going to be more dangerous. Yeah, it's more dangerous. It's just yeah. more of a da- it's more of a dangerous environment to be in. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you choose to be Joe Clark. But to be fair, I mean, like all the school shootings probably happen in like, you know, richer, nicer schools. That is also Maybe true, too. Maybe we should pay them a little bit more, too. That's also it's... true, too. That's what I'm saying. I think teachers should just, be, teachers, just, teachers should just get paid more across the board. But I would look at uh, being a teacher in some areas, I'd have to give you some hazard pay. For example. I'm not giving you any examples. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but I was, you, you okay. know the type of environments I'm talking about. All right? teachers? Yes. PE even? They get they get. Hell more? yeah, because them kids will beat you up. Them kids got on their play clothes and they want to try you. <laughs> they in there, they worked up. You know what I mean? That's when you might get into a fight in PE class. I'm serious, Jim. I bet you if you look at the statistics, gym teachers getting more fights than anybody. You think? I don't know. I just made that up. That's a brilliant idiot statistic. I'm just assuming. Fair enough. I'm just assuming. Fair enough. I'm just saying, like, I'm all about paying teachers more, but then we got to get them to do something over the summer. You can't take two months off over the summer. Why? Hey, they need a break. What is this two months off during the summer? Nah, you need that break, man. That's part of, that's part of it. Like, and, and now, guess what? Now you got money to travel. Now you got money to really go take a vacation, Mr. Teacher, Mrs. Teacher. Wait a minute. This is actually an interesting point. Teachers don't make that much, but is it calculated into the whole year? Because Yeah. My, yo, my mama was a school teacher. My mama was a school teacher in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Yeah. She teaches. Uh, she teaches St. Stephen. She teaches in Charleston. I think the she told me the most she ever made in one year was thirty thousand uh, dollars. think about that. Thirty thousand dollars with five kids. Fuck. We didn't go on no vacations when I was young. How tall do you think you would have been if you could get fed properly? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's genetics. Huh? Okay, that's genetics. My dad. My dad's short. But yeah, think about that. Thirty grand a year, yo. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, you probably couldn't survive in New York on thirty grand. No, and it's it's it it'll fu- it it really does fuck with you because it's like I can I can make that for a Zoom appearance. Think about that. You giving me a man with a lisp and a twelfth grade education that type of money to talk on Zoom. Yeah, but you're giving a teacher who you entrust your kids with every fucking day mm-hmm. like when you put your when you leave your child in that school yeah the only thing keeping those children safe are those that well, administration that's a, and they making 30 fucking grand a year yeah that's a great that's jersey 64 i mean I, it depends on the tax bracket right but like that's a great point about like paying the people that take care of our kids we always go like yo kids are the more most important kids of the future we got to take care of our kids but all the people that we pay to take care of our kids 
We barely pay anything. Yeah. Babysitters, $10 an hour, $15 an hour, maybe $20 an hour to take care of the most important thing in your life. How much you pay for your shrink? I don't know. know. You pay five times more than the person that takes care of your children. Not not mine. My nanny is well compensated. (laughs) How much your nanny really get? Let's be honest. My nanny is well compensated, but that's because I know that she's taking care of my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you get bonuses and all of that type of stuff. Like, I don't, you don't slack, certain things you don't You're slack You're not paying on. your nanny $100 an hour. For. There's no way. There's no way. I don't, let me think There's about no it. way. How many days does she work a week? Five. Five days a week. How many hours a day? Eight? $800 Eight. a day? Let's do the yeah, math. There's so. no yeah. fucking way, yeah, Charlotte. Add it up. There's no way. $800 a day times. I didn't say $100 though. You said $100 an hour. Is. I don't know. I've never looked at it because it's see it's a salary. $100 an hour. No, I, that's how much I pay for my therapist. And I know, and I'm saying you're not paying that. To, for, to I'm not sure. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see how much it is a year. But well, that's what all I'm saying is like we. It's, it's a nice salary, though. I, I agree. Nice. Yeah. I believe it's a nice salary. I'm just saying we front like we we really care about the people that are looking after our kids. When we'll let any stranger look after our kids for barely any money. But that's why they hire these kids to be babysitters. That you know, shows how your, little you give a fuck that about is your true. kid. Yeah, no, I would. Would nev- you hire your, Would you hire a kid to do no. a job? I would never hire a 16 year old to babysit in this era. Imagine that. Hell no. 16 year olds. Not these kids. These 16 year olds are different. Like, Why? They, there's something wrong with them. Well, do you think it is? I don't know. It's just, it's just off. Like, it's just weird. These kids are weird, bro. Yeah. Or maybe I'm just old and I just don't understand. Well, these, something is off. Like, they're just strange. Like, the way their brains work, the way they compute things. I think it's a lot to do with social media, just the way they take in information. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something off about that generation that I wouldn't trust a 16 year old. I really would not trust a 16 year old. Watching my kids. Paige asks if you trust your daughter at 16 to um, watch someone else's kids. Not somebody else's. Uh, not because she's not responsible, just because I don't, I think, I actually think that's too much responsibility for a 16 year old to have. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you want to babysit, have your own kids. Ah. What? You're, so 16 year olds should have their own. No, kids. I'm just saying. <laughs> <you> <laughs> know, <laughs> I was like, what? There was a whole, there was a whole MTV show about this, Charlotte. Exactly. Man, I think. <laughs> 16 and goddamn pregnant. Yeah. The teen fucking mom. Yeah. All right. So don't get fucking mad at Charlamagne. Get mad at MTV. And those <laughs> seriously, motherfuckers will get mad. I can't believe Charlamagne would say that. But you're tuning in religiously uh-huh. for years. Uh-huh. The goddamn teen mom and 16 and pregnant. Knock it the fuck off. Those shows made a lot of money. Uh, what? No. Made a lot of money. You know how much money they're making now being like just rich now, just being on that show? How much? They're making a good like 100000 or so or more than that. Taylor, I got a feeling that you have absolutely no fucking clue what you're talking about right now. They do. No, I'm saying because look, I used to watch Teen Mom, right? You used to watch the and... disrespected person in America is the black woman. That's right. We'll stop. Wait, you're telling her to stop disrespecting black women by continuing to talk? <laughs> Is that what you said? I'm on your side, Taylor. Taylor, Taylor, don't do that. Don't do that. Taylor, don't do that. Taylor, don't Taylor, do that. What happened? Don't do that. Don't, don't do that, Taylor. You can't get that defeated. Taylor was right. I don't believe How that. much? Think our kid for an episode. At least 500000 per season as the original team mom. No, but Taylor said the highest paid one is making being on that show. The they highest are. paid one is making five hundred thousand a on the season. Show? Season. And but what, no, they have other stuff after. Is, like you're, you're, what you're saying is they're making money from appearances. They're making money from yeah. doing like ads on Instagram. They have podcasts like and they're they're oh, not shit. making a lot of appearances. Who's watching the fucking kids? Come on, guys. They got nannies now. The whole now show and all is about shit. them not yeah. watching their kids. <laughs> Seriously, do you think five hundred thousand dollars is worth being a teen mom? I need y'all, we got to put this in perspective. It's not like they're showing up to do like love and hip hop or basketball wise and shit. $500,000 and you got to have a whole baby. Like literally when they do the casting calls for these shows, they say 16 year olds who have children or 16 year olds that are pregnant. Is that worth it? Mm, no. <laughs> no. No. Think about this it. This is a whole child. Why did they have and, and, teen dad? By the way, and that's why they keep having more. <laughs> they need <laughs> teen dad. That'd by the be way, lit. Half Just a million dollars. We know taxes. So that's 250, 200. Whoa. You know they're taking 40% out. Yeah, but you get to write off your kids, though. And they keep having more kids, too. They have like four kids. Like, 
Maybe three of them have four kids now. Yeah, it's they're fertile, up. bro. They're, you're fertile when you're younger. You're really? fertile. I think it was a good thing I didn't have Who sex. All of them had different baby dads, too, Mike by Pitch? the way. <laughs> Why are they having all these babies? <laughs> all of them had, and they're from the, a lot of them are from the country, though. Yup, Charlemagne. <laughs> oh, listen, Charlemagne. I, I, I saw that a lot growing up, so that's no... I, I, really? I, yeah. But I never seen white people have different baby dads, like how they have it. Oh, you, could you stop? I'm dead serious. We, we gotta stop I'm dead serious. We have to stop buying and talking. They don't see. I, don't, I know, on, but I'm just Paige saying just they don't said show she that. Has a cousin with six different baby daddies. Your in cousin Paige's gets defense. cummed in, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In Paige's defense. Holy She's from Lord. Pennsylvania. What's that supposed to mean? Gracious. She's from Pennsylvania. What's that supposed to mean? Try huh? anal. What's that supposed to mean? What do you mean? What's that supposed to mean? Pennsylvania. Yes. Pennsylvania's the up north, down south. <laughs> yeah It is You gotta be out y'all. Why do you say that? Take Philly out the equation bro. Everything else other than Philly, bro Philly. Pennsylvania's the up north it down is. South is mad Everything funny. else other than Philly in Pennsylvania Is pretty country Everyone says And now I'm, I'm starting to see a little bit What people are saying But nah Chill Delaware? What about Delaware? Delaware ain't country? Yeah, but Philadelphia is not part of Pennsylvania that's it what I'm saying. Yes, it is. What are you talking it about? It's though. in Pennsylvania. It is in Hershey? Though. Hershey? Have you ever been to Penn State? You're from Hershey? No, that's country. That's I'm not country as fuck. Is your cousin from Hershey? Is that, that's not near Hershey? Oh, it's close? That yeah. shit is country as fuck, bro. No, there's Hershey definitely Highland. country places in Pennsylvania, but. <laughs> <laughs> just admit, just, just admit if you Pennsylvania is country as hell. Not all Pennsylvania, though. I don't even know what we do. Billy doing don't here. count. What else are we talking about? I'm talking about, about like Lower Marion. That's not country. Lower, Lower Marion country is far. No, it's not. Lower Marion country. We're talking about rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. He was shooting on the freaking hoop that was on a tree. Mm hmm. What are you talking about? Yep. I don't know. I made that up. I'm about this to is... say, like, I, you know, I live next to him. No, it wasn't. Oh, God. <laughs> you, know, you see this? You see what oh, she did? Oh, Slight flex. flex. Hey, Slight flex. flex, girl. Hey, you just get your flex. Charlamagne don't want it. Charlamagne don't want it. Still to this day, hey, he does not believe me, Perspective yo. Perspective matters. <laughs> yo. You grew up next to Kobe. We used to go over his house. Y'all was poor. Yo. Hey, was, you, you, yeah. Both of y'all families. You How are we you didn't poor? Grow next to Kobe and Do you Kyle. know what his house looked like? We were in the suburbs. Stop. Chill out. What it was the suburbs? What do you mean, what are the suburbs? What was this? Google right now, Lower Marion suburbs. You want to yeah. see? I could Google. Wait, Google Alex. my house. Boy, Google my house. Here's the thing. Google my house. Yeah. Here's the thing. No, no, Google, Google, I, I, Google, Google like my house. Google my house real quick. I'm more suburban than you. I'm a person who grew up poor. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know I'm, I'm poor. poorer than you. I didn't know I was poor until I got older. <laughs> I got a feeling Taylor about to get a rude awakening about how she grew up. Yo. Okay, what's up? Google Lower Marion. <laughs> Medium household income is one hundred and seven thousand. Holy shit! Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That's my whole house. Mom and dad. That's a whole house. Wait, what? That's, that's a whole house. Mind you, my that's mom. That's side chick. No, no. That's other side chick. Dad, that's no, no. That's mom, side chick. dad Stop. the sixteen-year-old that's pregnant, claiming the baby on the taxes. Uh, who was pregnant? Who? Stop. I didn't see you. Stop trying me. The sixteen-year-old. The. 16 -year -old. Stop <laughs> Duh. Hold on, Google is that. Mind you, we're, uh, we're the, we were the only, like, me and Kobe's family were the only black families on that planet. <laughs> what? <laughs> on that street. I saw the house Kobe grew up in. <laughs> Did you see? You only saw the front. You know how far Somebody back it was? You, you only saw the house. Okay, okay so what? Room. How much did that house sell for, Alex? Google it. Somebody literally just bought the house I that know. Kobe Bryant grew up in. Uh -huh. And I think they bought it for like $26,000 or something like that. And it, and it still had the same basketball Mind you, that Kobe played on in the driveway. Whoa. Did yeah, you ever I know. play ball with Kobe in the driveway? My brother did. Did he really? Yes. Do y'all want to see a picture? Oh my God, you couldn't wait to go for the picture. I didn't think you was going to go for the picture this early in the argument. Because you're you trying me right early. now, yo. You usually wait about an hour before you go to the picture. <laughs> you're going to the picture this early? Wow. Yo. <laughs> she, she's going for the picture this early. Yo, but why are you hating? Wow. Wait, I don't even know why you hating so much. Yo, why are you hating so much? I will give Taylor credit, though. Yeah. Taylor was like this before Kobe passed away. Really? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> This is this this it just it's got more intense sense, rightfully so. But whoa, whoa, really? Yes, I've seen this little fake ass picture a million times. I still don't think it's Taylor though. 
It could my, not be mind you. you, my mom came too to right. the show and still, but you wanted to be kissing her ass like, oh, the okay. Mom, no, the mo- her mama was like, yes, that's her. That's her. Oh, but- <laughs> like, yeah, that's her. That's her. Yo, that's a hater, yo. Damn. How much did the house sell for, Alex? Nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred thousand. God, yes. Yeah. I want Taylor to be poor. Yo, so I know. <laughs> yo, like what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> the most disrespected woman on the planet is from Low Lower Marion. Bro, like, a nice come ass on. neighborhood. Come I don't want to hear nothing about no struggle from you ever, Taylor. I never said I did struggle. That is true. Nah, you said that you had it good, right? That is true. Taylor loves to brag about that shit. No, I don't. Right. Yes, well, shout do. to, salute to Lord Marion. I'm, try, I'm tired. I tried to make y'all out to be goddamn... <laughs> we is have there, one of the richest high schools or something like that. Is there Marion? Is there higher Marion? Are there any other like... There's a Marion. There's Marion. Um, and you, were, you went... So why is it Lord Marion? I, two, I always, I don't know. The why. two black families, bro. That's what happens, married? man. They moved them. <laughs> they changed the name. The second y'all moved in, as hell, that's low. It was middle Marion until these two black families moved in. <laughs> and they call it Melon and Marion. Is there an upper Marion? <laughs> is there an upper Marion? No. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Lord Marion. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because we need to get you guys some delicious food. Simple as that. We need to get you delicious food and we need to get you some discounts. And that's just what it is. HelloFresh offers fresh, high-quality ingredients every week for a super flavorful experience. Over 90% of the ingredients are sourced source directly from growers to ensure the freshest recipes are delivered to your door with HelloFresh. You can save time and stress effortlessly with contactless delivery to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning, grocery store trips, so you can uh, enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options. That's right. They got different options, different meals directly to your door. How could this get any better? How could it possibly get any better? I'll tell you how. Okay. You go to HelloFresh.com slash idiots80. Use the code idiots80 and you get a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash idiots80 and use the code idiots80 for a total of $80 off with free shipping on your first box from HelloFresh. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. Now let's get back to the show. Hey, what you what you find that was brilliant this week, bro? Wait, hold on, you want to go to that? What do you want? I mean, um, what do you find brilliant, man? We could I do the ads at the end. Oh, here, give me that. Or what do you find idiotic? What I found idiotic? I don't know if I found it idiotic or if I found it brilliant. I was, um, you know, I was trending on Sunday. Are we gonna talk about that? Yeah, and this re- is so funny. The reason I was out and I, and I, you know, I woke up Sunday morning and people hit me like, "Yo, you okay?" Like I'm like, "What the fuck you mean to my okay?" <laughs> Those like, are the terrifying. Ones. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, and they're like, "You're trending." I'm like, "For what?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's never good. And so it's like 26,000 tweets or something like that. And it's all old, savage Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I'm not mad about none of that stuff. I actually welcome it. And the reason I welcome it is because I'm fine being an example of growth for people. I'm fine being an example of evolution for people. And, 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 and the reason it's tricky, right? And that's why I say I don't know whether it's brilliant or idiotic is because I can't sit here and say that... Uh, I feel sorry about any of that stuff, and here's the reason why. A lot of people made a lot of money huh? off of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what I'm saying? And in a lot of ways, that was part of building, you know, the brand of the Breakfast Club, yeah. building the brand of Charlemagne, building the brand of Brilliant Idiots, whatever it was. Of course, 100%. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, that was a moment in time. You know what uh, I mean? Yep, that, yep. Was, that, that was a moment in time. A lot of it was performative. All of it was performative. I yeah. didn't realize that at the time. At the time, I thought... I'm just, you know, they calling me the hip hop Howard Stern. So here we go. Let me give them more of this creepy shit. You know what I mean? Let me give them that, right? But that that, sh- that shit was like, it wasn't, it wasn't me. You know what I mean? And that's why one of the reasons I moved away from it. You know what I mean? I moved away from it because I, I didn't get in no trouble. Clearly, I, I got, I was getting money. <laughs> These are too funny. Now, see, this is stupid. <laughs> this Me is... and Simba. So who killed your father? Yo, this is <laughs> then, so... no. This one is funny too. Charlemagne always got this look before saying something wild. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff, I don't. The, the, the Mac, like all of that stuff is fine. Like I ask those kind of questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm yeah. not purposely asking people crazy questions. Yeah. You know what I mean? But all of that other stuff, it was just performative. I got caught up in a shtick. I got caught up in like the whole hip hop Howard Stern vibe. 
Mm. Like, honestly, that's what it was. I was per performing, you know? And I you loved it. You were a great man, performer. Shut up, man. You were a great performer. <laughs> Yo, I loved it. You, I thought it was so funny. You know what? You know I what, watch you, them now and I think you, they're you know funny. You know what they better hope don't come out? What's that? Some old guy cool clips. Why was it crazy? Right. Go back and watch Guy Cole. You know now. they took down one episode because of something I said? You guys, first of all, think about a who whole was on, episode. Hold on, hold on. Think about who was on Guy Code. You. And Andrew Schultz yeah. and Little Duval. Yeah, it got a little crazy. What the fuck? So apparently I said something on one episode where I was like, uh, we, and you know, Guy Code is about relatable guy shit, right? For some reason, I thought it was appropriate to be like, yo, you ever see like a hot girl in like a sundress in the summer, you know, walking down the street and you're like, all right, fuck it. I'll walk this way for a few blocks. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man. Oh my god! No, no, they put it. Listen, listen. They they kept it in the episode. Wait for it, and then they animated it. Oh shit! They animated then, me walking. And then, walking and across. then years, later, and years, years later, years later, years later, when culture shifts, yeah, they like when culture shifts. You 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 want to change the shit? Somebody said that to me on Twitter. They was like, "Yo, you reaped all the benefits of acting like that, and now you're afraid to suffer the consequences." What consequences? Yeah, the consequences were the benefits. Here's the thing. There should be no consequences. The reason there should be no consequences is because cultural context matters, right? right. Like I keep telling y'all, stop giving motherfuckers retroactive speeding tickets. We were going the speed limit that was allowed at the time. Yeah, there was do no you, speed limit. Do you know who? There was no there was none. fucking speed limit. I mean, it was crazy. Bruh. <laughs> what? What? Bruh. Now, say it now. Say it now. Bruh. Say it Listen, now. You know who's getting $120 million a year? Howard fucking Stern. Oh, yeah, it's serious. Howard Stern's doing his new deal. He's getting $120 million yeah. a year. Howard Stern was the king of shock jockiness. Like, when they used to put me in publications and say he's the hip-hop Howard Stern, he's a shock jock, that's what I was modeling myself after. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, oh, this is what people want? We're going to continue to give them more of this. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, that's a small window, right? We start Breakfast Club in 2010. For me, that act wore out about 2012, 2000. 13, maybe 14. I don't fucking remember. I don't yeah. want to get into dates, right? But the reason the act wore out is for all of the same reasons it kind of wore out for Howard. I remember watching Private Parts and seeing Howard's wife get on his ass. For me, my wife would be getting on my ass. What would she say? Stop that dumb shit. The fuck is you doing? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and it's like, in my mind, in my sick, twisted mind at the time, oh, I'm on the right path. Well, your wife's mad at me the way how his wife was was mad was mad at him, you know. And then you got I got friends that really know me, like my homegirls, like Debbie Dev and Kendra G, and they like I really can't wait till people get to see the real you on the radio. <laughs> Andrew hates. <What? laughs> Andrew's like, what? no man. Yo, Debbie, <laughs> put down the rocks, bro. Put down the rocks, man. Stop fucking up a good thing, okay? No, that shit this was man not was a good all thing. Right. No, it was a beautiful no. thing. It was beautiful. It was hilarious. It was amazing. It was the way I played ball at the time. My game has evolved. But this weekend was definitely I thought very it was well calculated. organized calculated. Oh, no, no, because it was. Because I, no, I did, I, we, I did. You the, figured out I did who the it intel. is. No, no, okay. I didn't figure out who it is, but I did the intel. It's literally like 80 something percent bots. And so it was a thing. Somebody, but I'm used to that though. Listen, I, I've been used to that for a while. Like, but that's my, nothing. My new. point about that is, Charlie, is that the content was so funny. That even with people trying to smear you and cancel you, we were looking at it on Twitter and we were like, nah, this shit slaps still. Bro. I'm like, who are you? First of all, I'm like, who are you new people? Those are the old <laughs> hits. Those are the Those are the hits. Those are the old hits you can't perform no more. <laughs> yes, you can. No, you can't. You got, You're not listen, no, I'm not listening when to you. When you got a single, you gotta suck a fart out of butt soon. No. <laughs> One Zay, suck a fart out of a butt. Zay. No. A suck a fart I out of a so butt. I am so happy where I'm at in life. Call I it think, a bong rip. I thank God. <laughs> Call I, that bong rip. I thank God. Hit that bong. I thank God that I evolved. I thank God for my daughters because they helped me change, grow a lot. I thank God for therapy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go backwards. But once again, I can't shit on that era either because we made a lot of money in that era. But it, people don't understand cultural context. We really got to have the conversation about cultural context one day, man. Things were different. If you wasn't there, I can't describe it to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in the day, you was going to hear gay slurs in music. You was going. I will say this too, though, and this is what hurts me the most about it. And this is what this is why I'm so intentional about how I move with 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 women. You know what I'm saying? Especially black women. There was a time where it seemed like violence against women was a genre. Of music, you're saying? Just in general. Whether it's music, movies, comedy, whatever it was. Like the things that 
you know, people, men used to make light of. It was literally violence against women. We may not have seen it like that, but it was. You know what I mean? Interesting, interesting. And so it's just like... Why do you think that is? Do you think it's possible that that's the most extreme moral um, corruption that we can think of? Yeah. I think deep down we know how horrible it is, so oftentimes it like proliferates the art we create as like the worst thing to do. I think being that there was no line back then, right? Yeah. We were searching for a line. Everybody, like, was, everybody yeah. was literally trying to be as shocking as possible. Yeah. To, yeah. to kind of stand out. Yeah, like yeah, the jokes yeah. had to be like on this level yeah, or, yeah. or the commentary had to be on this level yeah. or the music had to be on this level. Like you had to almost say some like wild, shocking shit. That's why Eminem popped off the way that he did. There is a song by Eminem where he's like listing his credits like a basketball player coming to the to the game from blah 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 like as if it's a credit and then he just starts rapping it was crazy that shit is fucked up man and, yeah. and, that, and that right there is what makes me be so intentional about you know the, the, the support I, I show for women because I'm gonna be honest with you even back then there would be times where I would hear like women say I hate Charlemagne I'm like why do you hate me? Yeah. Until you go back and you like, oh. Well, what? What do you? What would you say that would make them hate you? Man, shut up, Andrew. I don't think you're, don't think you're Cause you're a man, and the worst kind of man. <laughs> okay, a male comedian, a white male comedian who, who still doesn't see anything wrong. You love pushing the fucking. Limits. This guy is so crazy, man. I don't like it. I don't I don't like it and that's why um But I don't think you ever said anything anti-woman, bro. Nah, you do you do unintentionally. It's just like listen, you can't go backwards and I'm not trying to go backwards, but I will say I am extremely ecstatic to hear people always constantly tell me over the past few years, 5 years actually, how much I've evolved and how much I've grown. And sometimes those those clips serve as a reminder like that's Charlemagne? Lenar? That's God damn. He was out of control. It's debatable. It's debatable. It's, <laughs> it's uh, God, it's so stupid, I'm just man. saying. I loved it. I'm never gonna stop loving it. I think it's absolutely great. Ad. Oh. <laughs> you wanna do an ad? All right, fine. <laughs> But the moral of the story is... Yeah, what's um, the moral? Let's get to the moral of the story. I don't know if there is a moral. It's just weird. It's just weird. It's just like, you know, you... Okay. What? You, you, you're attacking me for things that everybody has already seen. Yeah. I, I, I hold myself accountable. Yep. You know, for, for, for being in a, a fucked up state of mind, not taking shit serious as I should, I should have. Right. But also, you know, the consumers who ate it up, I loved it. I don't apologize. You know what I mean? I don't. It's just that culture was different. Yeah. The context of things were different. I actually am ecstatic about where we're at right now. Yeah. As a culture. But I still think that we have to have a real conversation about cultural context and yes. about how people have evolved and grown because I don't think we're giving people the grace to make mistakes anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like, how often does well, what about not mistakes? What about just jokes? Like I think jokes are allowed. Yeah. Even if they're fucked up. Because the yeah. intention behind the joke is just it's to, to make, make somebody, somebody laugh. laugh. Yeah. But you're doing it at somebody's expense. Well, a joke is always at someone's expense. Listen, everything ain't to be joked on. And that's just the truth to the matter. And we gotta know that. Like, I think you, gotta, you can joke. I mean, like, look, I, you know me, I'm gonna have a different I'm gonna have a different you're a comedian. View on this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm a speaking comedian. from the perspective of I think uh, that's what hurt you is that you would say, um, in my opinion, you were always a comedian and I looked at you as a comedian and my comedian friends looked at you as a comedian. Really? because Yeah. Cause we saw you had material. I think the average person wouldn't see it, but like you had like ideas and jokes and like wordplay that was comedic. It wasn't mm -hmm. like, oh, this is just something funny that sometimes you and I will just have a moment that's random and funny. But sometimes there's something planned that's said that's funny as mm -hmm. well. So we look at that as a joke. So I always gave you comedic expectations. But the average person would hear you go, I'm not a comedian. I tell the truth. Or you would have a line about it. The point is, is like, if you have that comedic expectation, I think people can take shit with a grain of salt. But if you're out there, you yourself branding yourself going, yo, this is who I am. I don't make any jokes. All I do is speak the truth. And then you suddenly say something wild. They're like, oh, I guess he really feels that way. And all I was doing was performing, bullshitting myself. Yeah. 
That's the fu- that's the most fucked up thing about because I used to always tell y'all you don't want to become a caricature yourself, and I absolutely became a caricature myself. It was great, and was still lying. About- <laughs> it was great. It was so good. It was, it was fucking so great. great. <laughs> Nobody listening to this right now. Oh, Nobody. Man. If you came on this podcast right now, you're like, yo, fuck all this tree hugging mental health shit. Nope. I'm going back to sniffing seeds. Nope. Nobody nope. listening to this podcast right now will be like, I'm nope. not listening anymore. They'd be like, yo, next week's about to be if, crazy. If that shit happens, commit me. <laughs> So I commit if you? I come in here and ever say that, commit me. I'm going to finish the app. Something is wrong. We're going to get a whole app off, and then I'm going to take you to the thing. Now, that's, now that's, not to say, that's not to say that you found a way You found a way to, like, elevate. I don't want to even say elevate because it acts like the other thing is lower, right? But, like, you found a way to maintain. It was a lower vibration. I don't want to put lower or higher. I think so. We're not talking about Marion's. Mm-hmm. I want to do. I want to. I want. <laughs> I want. I want to. I want to. I want to say this. You found a way to maintain your entertainment level because I didn't need that shit. Is what I'm trying to tell you. Because you developed the other skills. I always I, had those. You just didn't know that. You just didn't know that people would find them as entertaining. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But and you that's also saying? a confidence thing. Sometimes you might feel like Ooh, you have to rely on about that it. shit, Ooh. right? All right, guys, we're going to take a break, pay some bills real quick. Listen, uh, look good, feel good. In order to look good, you need to be dressed right. In order to be dressed right, it needs to fit. Simple as that, especially if you're in a suit. If you're dressing up, it's got to fit right, okay? No such thing as baggy suits out here. We're not doing that. No no such shit as as a baggy collar on a button-down shirt. Make sure that the nice threads that you wear fit appropriately. And finally, there's a company that allows us to have that option for an incredibly affordable price. Indochino, let me tell you all about it. Indochino is not playing around, okay? They literally can make you custom-made stuff. Custom-made stuff, okay? Made-to-measure clothing, fair prices, including suits, blazers, shirts, and coats, okay? You get to customize everything from the fabric, the lining, the lapel, the monogram. Every, every choice is yours. Your clothing is then made to your exact measurements, so it fits you perfectly. And the best part, here's the best part. Indochino suits start at just $299, all customizations included. That's insane. Cheapest suit that you'll find. That's one of the cheaper suits you'll find. And the fact that it's custom made to you, unbelievable. Unbeatable, okay? Indochino has showrooms across North America, or you can book a virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com. Now, you can get an extra $30 off any purchase of $399 or more at Indochino.com when you're entering the code Idiots at checkout. Listen, idiots at checkout, you're going to get that extra $30 off an incredibly affordable suit or dress up wear when you go to Indochino.com and make sure you use that promo code idiots. Go do it. Get your life right and go take your girl or your boyfriend out to a delicious dinner when you're both looking suave. Let's get back to the show. But And that's also a confidence thing. Sometimes you might feel like you have to rely on that shit, right? So it's like, oh, if I don't say this wild shit, <laughs> the people won't like me. And Ooh. then all of a sudden you do these deep interviews Ooh. and people are like, oh shit, he actually asked really thought provoking questions. And like, this is a really interesting discussion. He seems Andrew curious. Hit Andrew hit me like my therapist and I'm going to tell you why. I am at the point in my life where I'm really not trying to judge people for what they, for what they did based, based on survival. Yes. When they were in survival mode. You got to think, I have been fired four times from radio. Mm-hmm. I get this new opportunity on The Breakfast Club. I'm not fucking it up. I'm not fucking it up. First year, we didn't do so well in radio. Numbers are rough. I'm like, fuck it. We going for like, it. Let's go. You understand what I'm saying? And yes, it was a lot of insecurity in that. You know what I mean? It was a lot of, I don't, I don't, I don't have the confidence to um, necessarily be who I am, so to speak. Even though if you've watched me, Throughout my career for the past 23 years, a lot of the things that you're seeing now isn't new. Like, I've always been, you know, very pro-black. I've always done interviews with people like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Like, I've always felt like, you know, I knew I had this skill set when it came to interviewing. I was making noise doing interviews when I was on the radio in Philly. When I was on, in South Carolina, I literally got national attention from doing an interview with, with, with Buffy the Body at the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I like T-Pain was another interview that I, I, I got a lot of love for when I was in South Carolina. So <clears throat> those things have always been a skill set of mine. But when you're in New York and you're looking at everybody that cut through in New York, it usually is the shock jocks. 
Yeah, Star. Yeah, Howard Stern. Howard Stern. You know, the Miss Joneses of the world. Even Wendy Williams was Wendy? double shock jock for a minute. 100%. You know what I mean? So it's just like, man, fuck that. I'm going balls to the motherfucking wall. But yeah. it got to a point just for me, not for nobody else. Just literally for me and what was going on in my household yeah. that I'm like, man, fuck that. I can't be a part of this shit no more. When like, did you realize you could be equally entertaining without it? Shit, December 2019. With what? Just getting to a place of worthy. You know what I'm saying? Because let's not act like when you make this transition, right? When you make this transition, whether it's, I don't know, I, I would say it was around 2014, 2013, 2014. I could yeah. be wrong, though. No? Yeah. But when you start making that transition, right? And then you just start focusing on your craft, mm -hmm. which is giving critical, cultural critical commentary and, um, great conversation yeah right when you just start focusing on that there is people that man fuck that yo the old Charlemagne would have did this and the old Charlemagne would have did that and you're sitting there like damn am I not I giving them off. Yeah. yeah am I not giving them what they what they want but what you gotta do is you just gotta step back and realize and, and I didn't give myself this 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 breathing space until December 2019 like all the show has done is grown the more that I've evolved the more that I've sat down and did the work on myself, whether it's with my therapist, sacred purpose coach, whoever, when I started becoming a, a real a real man, like not cheating on my wife, you know, um, be, be really being a father, like in a real way, like being present. When I started doing that, everything around me started to evolve. Mm. Everything. That's why I honestly, truly don't trip off none of the old shit. Because that is just for a reminder for me to stay on my path and a reminder for everybody else on how much I've grown. Mm. And on how much I've evolved. And I will continue to be that image of growth and evolution. And I think about everything that I liked when I grew up, right? Like when I grew up, that's why I gravitated towards the Nation of Islam the way I did. That's why I love the autobiography of Malcolm X because, and that's why I love the book From Niggas to Gods by Akil because they were all stories about growth and evolution. Mm. And that's always attracted me. Now I hope I can be that example for other folks. Because literally, man, this is so crazy. And I'll get off this after this. This week, uh, I got a phone call from somebody and a real, real close friend of mine. And they wanted me to talk to this young guy who is getting a lot of buzz on, on, on the internet and getting a lot of buzz on social media. And he's like, I love Charlemagne. Like, and so we get on the phone and we're talking about, you know, him potentially doing a podcast. And he's like, yo, man, you know, I want to be like, like young Charlemagne. And, and, and like, yeah, like Howard Stern. And I'm just sitting there like looking at this guy like, but God is really showing me what's up this week. So I'm like, what do you mean by that? He was like, you know, just when you was, you know, reckless, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, just getting drunk and talking about having sex with all these women and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, let me tell you something. Not only is that plane not getting off the ground in 2020, <laughs> right? Eventually, you're going to look back on your life three, four years from now, and you're going to say to yourself, none of that shit was worth it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, can I look back and say that? Yeah. It depends what I value. Financially, was it worth it? Yes. For who I know I am as a man? For the questions I'm gonna have to answer uh, to my daughters in the future, to the, the the pain and stress I caused my wife, no, absolutely not. But you wouldn't get this version of me now if you didn't get that version of me then. And so when I saw that young man saying that, I you realize the influence you have on people. But what I did like is that he said, "Young Charlemagne, he's fully aware of Friends everything I do now." Yeah. You know what I mean? But Transition. In his mind, I want to be like that now because that's what's going to get me hot. Yeah, that's what he relates to, too. He's a kid. He's a kid. I don't know yeah. who this is, but I'm assuming he's, he's young. younger. Nah, he's young. He's young. He's young. He but young. yeah, he's a kid. That's what's exciting to them. You don't want to talk about being faithful and mental health. Oh, God. Let me pay for that. What? <laughs> what, what? No, what, you're right. You're right. What young right, ass right, kid right. is like going on Instagram Live like, yo, I've been faithful. No, these young boys are faithful, Schultz. Who? You were. You hey, were a faithful I'm an guy. anomaly, bro. When are y'all going to realize this <laughs> shit? I'm an anomaly. I say all these foul things, but I live a pious life. 
I don't even know what the fuck. You don't know be seeing his IG stories all hugged up with his girl. Yeah, Andrew's just like that. Andrew, I'm a great guy. That's why I could talk all this crazy shit. Because nah, you like know that. my heart is good. Now nah, Andrew Ben, he's black been, queen. That's right. No, he's been an example. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, especially when he had his black woman. Let's do some some asking idiot and then get the fuck out of here. Let's do it. Because I feel sad and I feel like I just that the because that's how I speak to my therapist. What everything I just talked about. You just got it out. I just got it out. Good, get it out. By the way, I wasn't it. even comfortable um, having that conversation just now. Really? Um, sort of, kind of. But Why? I don't know. It's just a, it's a, uh, it's a trigger for me. Okay. It's, just, it's a, it's a sore spot. You know what I mean? But I'm not worried about it because I know in the future, like I said, people will look back and totally get the growth, totally get the evolution, and yeah. respect it in a different way. You know? So yeah, it's whatever. You feel guilty, I could tell. You feel like you're carrying this thing. I do feel guilty. He's a cancer. Why? You're not a bad person. You didn't do anything bad. But like I said, it's just like, well, you know, I feel like there was a... Uh, I'll just say that's why I'm intentional for uh, about my support. Now? I mean? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've, I've always supported sisters, but you got to support through actions. You know what I'm saying? At, at all times. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, that's why, that's why I'm just really intentional about it because if I if I was a part of the problem I want to really be a part of the solution in a real way you know what I mean That's it. is that why I'm not really intentional in supporting but you're I mean you hate because women. I wasn't part of the problem you was definitely part of the problem no I wasn't you're part of the problem now <laughs> yeah. I'm not part of the problem I'm part of the solution I'm faithful I'm loyal I treat these women like queens I, just, I only take one at a time as somebody who grew up in New York I looked up to both of you and you need better role models, bro. That's no, no, no. But that's no, 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 no. I'm a wild boy. Peep it, though. Peep it. It's yeah. because you guys are like uh, comfortably yourselves and you have success being yourself. So even though, yes, I agree with Andrew. I do sometimes miss the old Charlemagne. Like that was fun, entertaining. I am proud and like I cheer you on with the growth and the person you've become now. Because at first I thought it was like, all right, he's just branding different. But now I see like it's real. Thank and you. the fact that people, you still probably see the comments of people like, yo, I missed the old Charlamagne and you don't care. Like you still want to be yourself. I, I respect that. Thank you. That's, like, the, that's right crazy what Alex just said. Cause people say that they're like, oh, he just, he did, he did an image change. No, I grew up. What the fuck you, I, I grew yeah. up life changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got three daughters, three. Yeah. I got a penis or two out of that. I might've been a, might not never have made the shift in that way. Yeah. I got three daughters. Three. Yeah. If I don't make the world a better place for them, what the fuck am I doing? And yeah. the only way to make the world a better place for them is to show up for all women. You understand uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, yo, what the fuck? And literally 97% of all my friends are women. Yeah. And, and historically, it's always been that way. Yeah. What y'all don't know is their humor is just as sick as mine. Really? <laughs> you know, Wait a minute. <laughs> Talk to us now. Talk to no, us. No, 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 no. But it's it's true. Because all but I will say all every single one of my women friends that know me know me. Every single one of them challenged me to be better. Every I mean every single one from Kendra G to Debbie Brown to Amanda Seals, Angela Rye now, Alicia Renee, like they always, 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 always challenge me to be better. And mm. you know, I hope um I hope I just continue to do that. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those things where like, and we should move on, but like where, you know, maybe you feel pressure to live your raps. Obviously you're not rapping, but like whatever we do, like live the image that you present it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. that's the nice thing about being like a comedian opposed to like being a someone maybe in hip hop where there's this pressure for you to always be that person that you put yourself out to. Like at least when you're a comic, like people know it's jokes. They're like, oh yeah, they're just making jokes. And people will often defend us. They'll be like, no, no, we want to be able to joke around about all these topics. Yeah. And like, we're not going, hey, Andrew, you need to live up to every single one of those racial stereotypes within a joke that you say. They're like, no, you just need to keep on being funny. So I think that's why. Or people look at you as being real, right? So they're like, oh, he speaks the truth. He's real. Yeah. So they think all of it is real. Yeah. 100%. But a lot of it, man, it's, it's impossible to be in this business and not at some point become a caricature of yourself. It's impossible to not at some point be be do things just for the performance of it all. Cuz at points, yeah, at points of time you need to turn it on. You it's impossible not to. Yeah, but the the driving force is often authenticity. Like 
maybe when we're on the fucking red carpet and we're answering questions from random like uh, journalist outlets, like we'll turn it on in that moment. But you can't fake it two hours a week on a podcast every week. Yeah, you can. I don't. I don't think you can. Well, well, I, I think, think. I think, I think this should expose no, 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 people. Yeah, yeah. Ours is different though because we do. I'm, and, and like I said, even even that stuff you see online, that shit is like literally that li shit is literally like five percent. Yeah. Of of everything I've ever done, like yeah. literally, it's this. It's, it's it's a very small portion. Yeah. We are honest. Yeah. We are transparent. Yeah. We are authentic, and we're not afraid to have conversations like this. Exactly. And it's always been that way. Yes. And, and that's, that's what I think people gravitate towards. You're comfortable being yourself. Yeah. You, if you have to fake a character, it can only last so long. I agree with that. No, I agree. And then it becomes, I agree. I don't know, redundant. You know, all those people who are characters, they just keep making the same jokes over and over again. And it's like, oh, because you ran out of you. You become. You know what I'm saying? Andrew you ran Dice out of Clay. the character. It, Andrew Dice Clay got the same jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not who he is. He has to operate within the character, and yeah, that character yeah, yeah. stopped learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, yeah, I like it. I, I I joke around. I bust your balls, man. I'm proud of you. I love the I love the growth. You know, obviously, I'm always gonna tease you, but at the same time, if anybody comes for you for your old shit, I'm gonna call them out because I thought that was hilarious, and I know the people that are coming. <laughs> I know the people that are coming for you also were laughing at that shit back in the day. A lot of them. So it's like, shut the fuck up. Let's be real. It's like you gonna come for Eddie Murphy. Though. You gonna really come for Eddie Murphy now? I'm I'm used to it, especially especially since I got a, uh, especially since I got into the politics thing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Bro, when you say some shit about like Republicans, even when you say some shit about Democrats, oh, they come hard. Oh, you see, you you you'll see it's a little different. Oh, they come hard. It's a little, a little strategic. A little strategic. It's a little different. I can tell. I'll tell you like this. I can tell the difference between some nigga shit and some politics shit and some politics shit. All right, I can tell. I just, just I can, I can tell. You know what? I I saw this happen. Maybe it's starting to happen with you, but I saw this happen with uh, Rogan. With Rogan. Rogan. Anytime Rogan, Rogan. mentions any <laughs> political candidate at all. The next day, there's a smear piece out on Rogan. I compare. I, listen, I, 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 and you might be going through the same thing. Absolutely. Bro. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second and save some relationships and start some relationships. We're gonna make sure that everybody is getting the dick and they deserve. Okay, and the best way to do that is make sure that dick is as hard as it's ever been. And we're gonna do with that with Blue Chew. Blue Chew, same active ingredient that's in Viagra and Cialis. This chew is next level. Okay. You chew it up and you are good to go. And ladies, you're going to get chewed out. You're going to have the time of your life. You're going to be begging your man to chew it up and do it again. Blue Chew, simple as that. Nothing else compares. This is what you deserve, fellas. There's a new girl that you're about to try to dick down. You might want to chew it out. You might want to have a lasting first impression. Okay, guys, it's Blue Chew. And here's the beautiful part of it. You can get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. You go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS. You can get the hardest dick of your life for free. Just pay that $5 shipping. Remember, bluechew.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. Enjoy yourself. Let's get back to the show. All right, let's do some asking, idiot. Okay. Oh, Taylor I also Gang. wanted to say for Positively Brilliant, you really like 21 Savages' album. I love 21 Savages' album. But y'all, if you've been listening to Brilliant Idiots for a long time or The Breakfast Club, you know I've been love 21 Savage. Mm -hmm. 21 Savage go hard. He never got kicked out of the country? Wasn't he like not a citizen They can't kick out that big stepper. That's <laughs> a big stepper. Sasquatch feet. Wendy Williams boots. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> On Breakfast Club, when you were talking about one thing, you were talking about Sasquatch, something like that, and then oh, Andy yeah, brings yeah, up the yeah, next topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah what yeah. was it? He was talking about, it was something about Wendy. I don't remember, but I was talking about 21 Savage. Yeah, you were like, Sasquatch, Sasquatch feet. feet. And then he goes, he goes, all right, what else we got? Wendy, Wendy Williams, Williams stomping around. And like, what? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right, let's do some Ask an Idiot tale again. Okay. Um, from Carrie Rovick, they want to know what movie has influenced you the most. What movie has influenced me the most? Go ahead, Andrew. What movie has influenced all right, me the most? All right. What movie has influenced me the most of all movies? Wow. I don't know. I truly don't know. I don't know how to answer. I have a list of movies that I can listen, that I can listen to. That's on my podcast on my brain. <laughs> I have a list of movies that I can watch when I'm in certain moods. Like, I love Armageddon. Armageddon is one of the most slept on movies. Shawshank Redemption, amazingly slept on movie. Incredible movie, actually. Um, 
let me think. Uh, oh, what's that Denzel movie? What's the Denzel movie with the football coach? Uh, Remember the Titans. Fire movie. Shit, Avengers Endgame. Amazing. Man, listen. I watch the last hour and 16 minutes of Avengers Endgame yeah. at least twice a week. I'm yeah. talking about from the time Hulk does the snap yeah. and brings everybody back. That is the be- Yo, I don't think there's a better action scene in a movie. And it's go time. It's go, man, man. I mean, everything from when Captain America grabs the hammer. Oh, yeah. And then oh, when, yeah. when Falcon's like on your left and they all come back yeah. and they get the fight. Oh, my God. That shit is incredible. Bro, the uh, if you watch that on YouTube, you can watch it with the audience's reaction. Yes. That's the only way I watch yeah, 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 it because yeah. I love when the Captain America grabs a hammer and then everybody in the audience starts goes crazy. It. Yeah, I went to see that shit four times in the theater. What was what you movie three? influences yeah. me the most? That's crazy shit, Charlotte. Any um, what's your Halloween costume? Can you give us a hint, or you want to? I haven't even thought about it this year. Well, are I we even doing Halloween this I year? I don't even it? know, bro. Like, what happens with the kids? I want. I know what I want to be though. Hell yeah, yeah. I want to be Sting. Remember old the thing? wrestler? Yeah, remember uh-huh. this thing with the black trench coat yeah. and the fucking hair and the white black and white and the b- black baseball bat. Yeah. I want to be Sting. Oh, I thought you always do a superhero. I think Sting is a superhero. He's a fly. He's in white face though, bro. I don't know. If you could do <laughs> Yo, I don't know if you could do that, bro. I don't know if you could go white face, bro. <laughs> I want to be Sting this year. I don't know. We'll see. If there's a Halloween, I might just dress up just to dress up. I mean, we yeah. back in the studio anyway, so fuck it. Yeah, maybe we'll do a little dress up episode. Yeah. All right, what else, Taylor? Um, from Quentin twenty eight, he wants to know if you were Pence, how would you swing the fly and spin in your favor? Shit. If I was a Pence, Pence how would yeah. I swing the fly and spin? Yo, I think it is in his favor. You dominate the airwaves. You dominate the internet, and then all of a sudden, people aren't talking about the the points that Kamala was making. Yeah, it is kind of fucked up when you have a debate and um. Out of the two debaters, everybody's talking about a fucking fly. That's it. That's Think about up. it, right? Because if you win the internet, you win the debate. Even Sadly. if Kamala won the debate, if everybody's only talking about Sadly. pants and a fly in the hair, they're not talking about any Kamala's points. And to be honest, this debate was super important for Kamala because a lot of people are voting for her as if she's going to be president when Biden steps down. So you want to take as much as you possibly can out of this debate. Yeah, that's my biggest problem with Senator Harris. And it's not a problem, but I, I, I want her to step up to the plate in that way, because it just isn't just about Joe Biden getting in the White House. This is about her future political aspirations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she has to campaign over the next 27 days. Like, yo, I'm letting y'all know why I should be y'all, why I should be in the White House for the next 12 years. Mm. Right up. Eight as a VP. I mean, four as a VP, eight as a president. That's 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 what I think. But yeah. What else, Taylor Gay? Um Wow, has that ever happened in the past? Have you ever had Somebody in the in the White House for twelve years has a VP ever won the following election and then been reelected? That'd be crazy. Uh, okay, well, in, in my in my lifetime, I remember George Bush being with Reagan for four, then winning, and but then he, he lost. He, yeah, yeah, he lost the second time. Um, I mean, I, I can't remember. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't huh. remember. A long time to be in power. She is the perfect candidate for it. Yeah. She's the one that can do it. I think so. Yeah. And she's young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like she's the one that could be VP now and then eight years be in the White House for eight years as president. Yeah. And I'm telling y'all, Senator Harris could really be America's president in a real way because she will listen to everyone. Mm. She'll deal with progressives. She'll deal with people on the other side of the aisle. She does it. She's been in the Senate all this time. She does that now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's nobody's needs will be ignored. Right. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. She, she got a white husband. Everybody. So she understands right. that side of America. She she's a black. police officer. She's a, yeah. she's a D- AG. Yeah, yeah. Like she understands it all yeah. in a very unique way. Yeah. Like she would be very good for America, man. I'm telling you. William Harrison, Alex just brought up. That was it? Maybe. Maybe. Who the fuck is William Harrison? Yeah, some white guy. Huh. All right, last one. Um, from Cowabunga Cole. What's the worst superpower you can think of? The worst what? Superpower. The worst superpower. Um, fast guy. What's his name? Flash. Flash. Yeah, because everybody else is fast too. Just part is <laughs> like you don't even mention that. Like no super, no superhero is like yo. I run real quick, right? Yeah. It's always like I, I always, can disappear and run. Yeah, I always thought it was fucked up that they would have like Superman racing the Flash. Like Superman was literally like white privilege. 
Keep going. Because he could do everything. Like he could, they would have him racing Aquaman. Okay. Uh, I mean, swimming with Aquaman, racing the Flash, fighting Batman. It's like, well, what the fuck? Why do you need any other superheroes if you got Superman? Yeah, that's a good point. Why? Yeah, he's Captain Marvel. He does every fucking thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if that's white privilege. Batman is white privilege. Batman is definitely white. Batman and Tony Stark's are the epitome yeah. of white privilege. Yeah. It's like, shit, y'all already rich and y'all want to be superheroes? Yeah. <laughs> y'all ain't got nothing else to do but save the world? Yo, we were talking about this the other day, just how, what a piece of shit Batman really is. <laughs> All he has is inventions. Nah, whatever. he don't or even invent it. All he does. Oh, come on, Taylor. What? what? Everything in here is an invention. Yeah, inventions are no, good. I mean, like, all he has, no, I mean, all he has is gadgets. He don't have like The a, microphone is a gadget. No, I'm saying all he has is that. He don't have like an actual like body He doesn't have power. any superpower himself, but look at this. When yeah. you think about what he really does, he just beats up poor people. <laughs> That's all Batman does, right? It's like you got all these gadgets, this whole outfit for somebody who's trying to take someone's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you really need guns and jumping down and cables coming out of everywhere and a Batmobile and a water Batmobile for a guy who's doing petty theft. And the Joker was poor too. I don't know what the Joker was, but like it makes you <laughs> side with the Joker. Like the Joker's seeing this fucking lunatic going around in a bat car, just stopping people who are just robbing wallets because they're starving to death in Gotham. He's a billionaire who's making money off of all these poor motherfuckers. And that's why they're starving in the first place. And then he goes and beats them up when they're just trying to get some money to feed my daughter. And they probably were. <laughs> 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 all my people in the struggle. Yeah. It's all good. Listen, and they probably was only working with Joker because Joker gave him a job. That's it. There's no jobs left. Because what? <laughs> Batman outsourced all them shits to India. Dude, that's all he is. He's a piece of shit billionaire. He Yo, really is. You know who else is? A, Yo, Tony Stark is a piece of shit too. He's all his robots. All that fucking technology he was doing, it was all AI. All AI. Go you hire some nobody. goddamn kids to help you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> you, this shit is crazy. Then he makes more robots. To make his to robots. make other robots. You can't hire one other dude to make some robots. His assistant is a wow. robot. How crazy is that? Wow. And you know how convenient this motherfucker is? He married his secretary. If we really think about it, man, <laughs> not only did he beat up poor people, Batman beat up uh, disabled. Because Penguin could definitely have gotten a check for Definitely the gotten a check for Joker disabled. had mental health issues. Uh -huh. Riddler definitely had mental, mental health Mental health, issues. yeah. Fucking Mr. Freeze was just cold. Hand him a fucking blanket. Yo, defund <laughs> Batman, son. Defund, defund that motherfucker, Catwoman yeah. clearly didn't have a father. She just wanted some love. She you just wants some love. She was overly sexualized for no reason. She just wanted a goddamn hug, somebody to love That's her. That's it. You know what I mean? Why was the suit so tight? And where the fuck was Robin's parents? You know where they where were, the bro. Where the fuck was Robin's parents? You know where they were, Nobody bro. Nobody want to talk about that, but Batman where was Robin's parents? Batman probably killed them. Batman probably killed them. Wow. He probably did. Probably wow. did. Why was he an orphan? Because of you. That's a story they don't want to tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about stealing little boys. Listen, man. Mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne wanted some dick. He might have. Dick Grayson. Oh. <laughs> Damn. I mean, yeah. You bring a little boy to a bat cave? In the dark? That's a little frightening, dog. Let him drive knowing you don't have no license. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dress him up in a nice little outfit. Little colorful outfit. <laughs> Whoa. Wait a minute, dude. <laughs> With the bat cave? Wait a minute. Really? Wait a minute. Never, never land? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if he was describing the bat cave. Oh, fucking never, never land. What the fuck? Do you have animals there? Yeah, we got bats, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'll tell you, we gotta cancel Batman, bro. Yo, cancel Batman. Batman problematic as fuck. He's really problematic. No, Bruce real. Wayne, problematic. Batman bro. problematic as fuck, y'all. Mm -hmm. He is. All right, hundred uh, percent. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.